So now that we've looked at executor completion service, the completion service interface, we looked at how it was implemented, we showed how to use it, we showed how it could be combined with the Memoizer in support of our Prime Checker app. Let's talk about the pros and cons of what we've just seen. So the main pros and cons, or the main pros really, are that this solution fixes the problems with the executor service that we looked at. So there, were the, there was the executor service we looked at before, there was the executor that we looked at before that. And so one of the main things that this fixes relative to the executor service is that we don't have to do the wackiness of waiting for the futures in some order than when they complete. So you can see this code just gets the futures as they complete. And that's the, the asynchronous future processing model. That's, that's what we're getting by using that. Otherwise, we would have to wait in some other order that would be more complicated if things didn't occur in the order that we wanted them to finish. And the second big win here is that we have this transparent optimization without changing the prime callable. So you can see here's, here's prime callable. Oh, I'm sorry, here's the, um, here's the function. This is the function prime callable expects a function. Memoizer implements the function interface and therefore we can use the Memoizer transparently here without having to change what prime callable does. So that's, that's kind of why we have Memoizer inheriting from function. Note that it would be easy to replace the brute force checker with some other checker without changing this code. We just, you know, have, you could have a conditional statement that says, you know, make a memoizer. You could have a Boolean says, uh, you know, brute force. So if it's brute force, we'll use the brute force checker. Otherwise, we could use some more optimized implementation. Um, there are some downsides with this implementation, which I didn't really put here, but probably should. So I'll talk about it briefly. One of the downsides with this solution is that as the, as the program runs for a long time, uh, you'll end up adding lots of things to the memoizer, but that memoizer will never shrink. It'll just keep growing and growing and growing. So at some point, especially if you don't have a lot of duplicates or if, if duplicates don't occur very frequently and you're running this program for a long time, you could end up wasting a lot of space. And eventually, that'll start to slow things down. It'll either use up a lot of memory or eventually the number of items in the concurrent hash map that the memoizer is using under the hood, this thing, the mcache, that'll become excessive and you'll be wasting your time. So time and space could be a problem. So what we'll see later when we look at other variants of this, which will probably be in a couple of weeks after the break, we will see how we can use timed mechanisms, particularly the, the scheduled executor service capabilities in order to be able to uh, periodically purge stale entries from the memoizer. So we'll look at some timed memoizer implementations that are going to fix this deficiency. All right, so that's the end of the discussion here.